Welcome back to the third and final part of our video series where we are creating ourselves a shopping list app using Python code. In the first two parts of our video tutorial, we did get our main menu created and we added some functionality to the first three items in that shopping list app. Now what we want to do to finish off with is just code up these last three options. Okay, so let's get straight into it. What we need to do first of all is towards the top of our code, we're looking at number four here. We need to check to see if an item is on our shopping list. So when the user presses number four, what do we want the computer to do? Okay, so go down to the if statement section here and look for the elif selection equals four. That means when the user selects the number four, what do we want it to do? So at the moment it says pass, just delete that. We want it to run a function called check item, bracket bracket. So we're going to call up a function called check item because we're going to check to see if there is an item on the shopping list. Now keeping that function name in mind there we're going to go down the bottom of our page okay just beneath the other functions we've created up are created. We're going to define another new function called check item. Make sure you open and close a bracket at the end and also put a colon there. Now underneath check item we need to ask the user a question first of all. So I'm going to create a variable called item. And I'm going to use input to ask a question. And I'm just going to say, what item would you like to check on the shopping list? And we'll put a colon, space, close our quotation mark and bracket. So the user is going to type in an item that they would like to see if it is on the shopping list or not. Whatever item they type in, it will be stored inside this variable here called item. And then on the next line, what we're going to do is just run an if statement. So if the item is in the shopping list. Oops. So that just says if item in shopping list. So if the item that the user types in is in this shopping list here somewhere, then what do we want the computer to say? So we'll just give it a message, a print message, and we'll say yes. And I'm going to put a comma and a space and then close my quotation marks. And I'm going to add in the item name. So that's the variable from up above there. So plus item plus, all right, is on the shopping list. Make sure you close off your quotation mark and bracket at the end. Now we need to also add in an else, just in case the, the item that the user is searching for is not on the shopping list. What do we want it to say? Well, basically the same as this, just basically reverse. So we'll just say no instead of yes. No, we'll say item is not on the shopping list. Okay, so that is our code for checking on an item on the shopping list. We ask the user what they want to check on. If that item is in the shopping list, then we tell them, yes, that it is on the shopping list. Otherwise, we just say, no, it's not on the shopping list. Let's run that and test out button number four. Okay, make this a bit bigger. We'll make number four selection. What item would, would you like to check on on the shopping list? I'm just going to search apples. And you can see here it says, yes, apples is on the shopping list. If I run it again, and search for something that's not on the shopping list. So if I type in four and search for chocolate, it says no, chocolate is not on the shopping list. Okay, so that is our number four button working nicely. Back up towards the top, let's have a look at number five. It says we need to look at how many items are on the shopping list. So we're going to get the computer to count how many items are in our shopping list here. All right, so find the section that says elif selection equals five. Delete the word pass. And we're going to run a function called, I'll just say list length, bracket, bracket. Now remember, because I'm using two words here and I can't use spaces, I've just put a capital L there on the second word just to show that there is actually two words there, even though we can't use a space. So our function is called list length. Let's head down the bottom and define that function and tell the computer what it needs to do when the user presses number five. So define list length, bracket, brackets, and a colon. All we're gonna do is we're gonna print a message that says, there are, we'll put a quotation mark and close that and a comma. We use 
the word len and then open up shopping list inside of a set of brackets that's just saying we want to find the length of the shopping list so that basically means we're going to be counting how many items are in the shopping list put a comma and we just say items on the shopping list whoops there we go now you'll notice that I'm using commas here instead of plus signs and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually using a number here when we insert numbers into our sentences we use commas Okay, when we're inserting words into our sentences, we just use plus signs. So there's a little bit of a difference there in Python for that. Uh, so that's a pretty quick one. Let's give it a test to make sure it works. So we just want to type in number five, and we should get a message telling us there are four items on the shopping list. Perfect. That's number five coded up. Last one now is looking at number six, which is clearing the shopping list. So we just want to delete everything that's on our shopping list easy so let's go down to our last elif section here it says elif selection equals six we're not going to pass we're going to run a function called clear list okay so we're going to create a block of code now down below called clear list let's go to the bottom here just above main menu and we'll define our final function so def it's called clear list bracket bracket colon and the code we use to clear a list is shopping underscore list dot clear bracket bracket okay so it is looking at our shopping list here and all the things inside of it and it's just going to run a function called clear to wipe everything outside of that list all right and we might just put in a confirmation message as well so the user knows that it has been cleared so we'll say the shopping list is now empty Okay, so let's give it a run, test it out. So now when we press the number six, we get a message that says the shopping list is now empty. Perfect. So that right there is your shopping list app created. What I'm going to do now is test it from the start to make sure everything's working. So just make sure you save it and give it a run. And let's start from number one and see how we go. So the number one, we're going to view the shopping list. Perfect. There's our shopping list. Number two, we want to add an item to the shopping list. I want to add bread. Okay, it tells me bread has been added to the shopping list. Just to check if it actually has been added to the shopping list, let's press number one again and view our new shopping list and see what's on it. There we go. We can see bread has appeared now at the end of our shopping list. Perfect. Now, Let's do number three. We're going to remove an item from the shopping list. Type in three. Ask which item would you like to remove from the list. Let's remove apples. And press enter. The message says that apples has been removed from the shopping list, but let's confirm it by going back to our selection here and typing in one. And sure enough, in our shopping list, it no longer has apples. It has been removed, and we're back to four items. Perfect. Let's do number four. So we're going to check on an item. So it says, what item would you like to check on in the shopping list? Let's search for apples. It says, no, apples is not on the shopping list. Perfect. So remember, we just removed that. Let's do another search for something that is on the shopping list. So let's search for bread. And it says, yes, bread is on the shopping list. Okay, so the first four items in our menu are working nicely. Number five now. We want it to count how many items are on the shopping list. We know that works already, so there it is there. There are four items on the shopping list. And finally, number six should clear our shopping list, so empty everything on it. So it says, when we press enter, the shopping list is now empty. Let's press number one just to view our shopping list. And there it is. We've got nothing on our shopping list. Okay, so that is a working app. Everything looks nice. So I'm going to stop it and save it. So the one thing that I need you to take out of this tutorial is functions. Okay, we created a whole heap of functions in our if statements here. You see when we create a function, all we do is write the name of the function and a bracket bracket to call it up. Okay, so that will tell the computer we want to run a function with that name. 
looking down below, we've defined all the functions down here. So we actually tell the computer what code it needs to run when it calls up a function. Okay. If we press, say, number one here, it's going to run that function right there, and it's going to completely skip past all these other ones. So the computer knows it only needs to run this one function, and it completely skips the rest of them. There's no need for them. Okay, the user didn't want to look at any of those other selections, so it doesn't have to run those extra bits of code. Okay, so it's super handy using functions to just run sections of code that you need. I'm going to stop now before I confuse you too much. Um, that is your shopping list app created. Okay, make sure you save it, and I'll see you in another tutorial.